Hello, and welcome to a tutorial about how to download the Dash client, check that the hash agrees with the published hash, and verify a signature on the on a digital signature on the published hash to uh, ensure uh, that we have data integrity. Uh, together, uh, these these steps together actually do ensure uh, quite uh, quite well that you're running the intended uh, Dash Core release. So the first thing we need to do to download the Dash client is look at the release page. And so here's the release with the current release. And we can see that there's all these architectures available. And basically, depending on the type of computer we have, um, we'll need to use different, uh, different, different files. So. Um, whatever computer you want to run your node on, you can type, if it's a Linux computer, you can type lscpu uh, at a command line, and uh, this is what is shown. And that's a, this is a lot of information about your computer, um, but the very first line gives you the architecture. So the architecture of this computer is x86 underscore 64. So, um, when I'm looking at a, a client to run, this is the toolbar. This is the tarball that corresponds to the architecture at x86 underscore 64. So let's just download that. Boom, boom, boom. Okay. And while I'm at this page, I'm going to go ahead and get this. Grab this file, which is uh, which we'll need later to verify that we're downloading the correct. Uh, the correct version. Um, let's see, there's this, um, uh, there is also a, a signature, a detached signature right here. You could use that to verify that this is the correct release. However, I'm going to uh, do it a different way, which I believe has the same cryptographic amount of security. So, um, anyway. So good. So that does that. So after we've uh, done these downloads, we can go in the downloads directory and, and see here's these two files that I just downloaded. And what I would normally do is I would move them into a different directory because my downloads directory gets kind of uh, crowded. But this is a a, a fresh user, so um, so I'll just stay in this directory. And uh, the first thing I'd like to do is show you the contents of this file, SHA-256-SUMS. And you can see that there's a signed message here. And the message that's signed is, is these, it has these, and I'm going to call them numbers. What these are are just hexadecimal numbers, which uh, is kind of a unique identifier to each file. Sometimes it's called a digital uh, fingerprint. And um, so what we can do on our Linux computer is we can t type in SHA-256-SUM, and I believe some Windows computers do this as well, and then type in the file name. And then what happens is it spreads out a hash value. And so our file name is the one that's at the bottom here, the x86 architecture. Um, and uh, we can see that the first six digits are 15D111. And that certainly agrees with the first six digits up here, 15D111. And the, like the last four, di the last two digits are 42. Last two digits are 42. So that verified that eight digits agree. And we could go through all these digits and verify that they're all the same, but we're at a computer. So why wouldn't we want a computer to go through and check that? So. Um, we can actually just ask the computer to check that by using the same command, SHA-256-SUM, but this time we'll use a flag with a double hyphen, check, and then um, we type in the, the file that has the hashes and the file names. And this is the output. Now, what happens is the, these files that are in the name, it tries to check them, but those files aren't on this particular computer, and so I get that error. I said there's no such file or directory until it gets to the very last one, which is, uh, is on this computer. It computes the hash, compares it against the published hash, 
and they're the same and it, pro it prints out okay okay so that's that's the one part that tells me that okay that the, that the, there's some data congruence the advertised hash is the same as the hash that I compute with this computer so uh, that that's pretty good that means if there's an attacker uh, they're they're somewhat sophisticated because they did not only change the release but they also changed this file with this hash um, a good hash function if you change the file it will change the output of the hash function so the hash value so um, while I'm on this SHA-256 command to SHA-256 sum uh, you can also use not only the check flag but also in conjunction you can use the um, ignore missing with a hyphen in between ignore and missing and then the same thing and the, here, here um, let's see I might have had a typo yeah and um, what this will do is instead of giving you all this errors with no file or directory it says okay this one file is there it's okay and also tell you this, that there's 19 lines that are improperly formatted but that's the signature that's there the signature is not telling you a hash value and a file name so that's not the proper format to, to verify hash but that signature we're going to use that uh, just now actually so let's verify that that signature is correct now to verify that that signature is correct we need the public key and the public key can be found in the dash repository um, if we just go to the contribs uh, contrib directory and then there's this G I T A N keys directory and here's all the keys that are used to sign uh, the releases and um, right now uh, Coda block seems to be the one that's signing all the releases and, and if, actually if you dig around you might be able to find that more than one of those keys is signed the same release so here is Coda box public key and you can see it says begin public key and at the very end it says end public key and all we need to do is somehow get that into a file so if we had the dash repository the file would be like we could clone it on this machine and have the file right there I'm gonna just do it kind of simple I'm gonna make a new file called a block dot ASC and just paste it boom paste it right there okay <clears throat> and now we can use the program GPG to um, to verify that the signature is correct Okay, GPG is a program that stands for GNU Privacy Guard. And GNU Privacy Guard, this, this program actually is a way to interface and implement the PGP protocol. And PGP stands for Pretty Good Privacy. So GNU Privacy Guard is to interact with the Pretty Good Privacy protocol. So the PGP protocol. So what we can do with GPG is import the key that we just copied right and that when we import it we get the message like this it says yes we process one key and we imported one key it's good it also gives you other information this is an old email uh, I'm not sure if it's used by code block anymore but uh, this is the one that's published on the github okay and now that we have imported the public key this public key we can one command I like with GPG just to verify that everything's right is, is the command with a double hyphen list hyphen keys and that will just list all the keys that we have so uh, later on we might want uh, a key from a different developer and we would have two keys in our GPG uh, verified so now let's verify the signature so to verify the signature we just do again the GPG command but this time we use a double hyphen verify and we type in the the file that has the signature that we want to verify in this case it's the sh the file sha256 sums ASC we want to verify that signature 
And so if I uh, do that, uh, I can see right here, it says that yes, a signature was made, it was made with this key, and there's the fingerprint of the key, and the good signature, it says that there's good signature. And that good signature is uh, pretty much uh, what I'm looking for. If, as there's, if it says it's a good signature, then that wasn't some gobbledygook included in the thing, or the, the message hasn't been changed. Uh, in bet between signing and, and me receiving it. So um, another thing to check is this fingerprint here. I'm not going to name it off, but uh, you definitely should have the right fingerprint uh, for uh, Coda block. Now, to verify this fingerprint, uh, that in, you know, in an ideal world, you would actually go up to Coda block and he would give you a flash drive with his key, and then you would uh, know his key that way. Uh, m most likely that's not going to be the case. So what you might do is look for other sources for the key. Instead of getting the key off of GitHub, you might find the key on Git um, on Keybase. And I believe there is a Alexander does have a a key there with a different email, but um, I believe it will verify the same signature. Um, or or um, there are uh, PGP key servers. And there's at least one key server out there where I've actually signed a copy of this key. So if, if you trusted my key, uh, you should trust, and you trust me, then you should trust uh, the Alexander Block one that I've signed. But um, <clears throat> anyway, um, even if you don't verify it with a second uh, source, uh, go through this. Like right now, we're going through this with 14.0.4. Let's say the next release is 15. Then when you do this again with 15, you don't have to download that key again. And you can verify it against an existing key. And so as long as it wasn't hacked when you started, you'll be able to, um, you'll be able to identify any uh, funny business that happens between now and uh, the next download. Now, um, <clears throat> which, so, now, Alexander Block might not sign every release, but what, what has happened is that you can actually, if you dig around, you can actually find releases signed by uh, all the different developers. Uh, so, uh, good. So, th this, um, this is a video which allows you to check that the hash agrees with the publish hash, and check the signature on the publish hash to uh, verify the data integrity. Uh, I, would, I think this is good for anybody that runs a node to do, and it is, I think it's extra good or you know, more important to do if uh, somebody runs a master node. So thank you for listening. Uh, of course, this would apply to other situations as well. Uh, I, I, uh, and be safe out there.